We're going to roll to see who goes first. That's a nat 20. I got a nat first 8. First time. Nat first eight. video. First time. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the first installment of the Unseen You Have Been Chosen Battle Guide. In this video, we're going to be going over the setup of the game that includes the board, your character display card, and what the sections of that display card represent. Stay tuned. Here's the first one. Okay, guys, so you're going to take the board and lay it out like so with the logo in the bottom left-hand corner labeled the Assaulted Suburbs. And then we're gonna start in the upper left-hand corner where there is a blue room. It's marked, one, by the threshold there. This is how you're going to recognize the buildings as you go through the game. And in every building, you'll have a threshold with a number and an exit. So that's kind of important as we go along. But just to start, we're going to um, just lay some tokens in the upper left-hand corner here. You'll see some circles. These are just holding spots for tokens so you can keep the board clean. So starting with a stack of five each, we're gonna put some prayer tokens down, some melee tokens, some ranged tokens, now we're gonna take some horde tokens and throw those up in the upper left. You're gonna be using horde tokens quite a bit. If you do run out, keep in mind that some of the other marking tokens we just looked at have hordes on the back of them, as you can see here. So now, in the upper left, there's two more slots. We're just gonna take the black D4. This is your black mist dice. We're gonna place that up there, just as a holding spot, because you're gonna be using it as the game progresses. And the color D6, we're gonna throw that up there. All right, so we're gonna start with building one, placing the Stronghold of Doubt and the Prince of Doubt cards over Threshold 1. With the Stronghold on top. Next, we're gonna take the Prince of Doubt model and its Captive Lost in Doubt token and place those in the exit room of the same building. Now that the first building is set up, we're gonna move on and quickly set up the remaining five buildings. Those are very similar, um, just a slight difference. We're gonna be placing the cards face down. We're gonna take the Queen of Guilt and the Stronghold of Guilt. We're gonna put them face down over the threshold with the Stronghold on top, along with the Queen of Guilt model and her captive. In building three, we're going to have the Counselor of Fear and the Stronghold of Fear, again, with the Stronghold on top. And we're gonna take his model and the captive, crippled with fear, in the exit room. Building four, we take the Duke of Sickness Monarch card and the Stronghold of Sickness, place that over the threshold, face down. Along with his model and the captive in the back room. Then we're gonna take the King of Suffering card along with the Stronghold of Suffering. We're gonna place that face down in the threshold five and we're also gonna take his model and place that in the exit room. And lastly, we're going to take the Lord of Hatred card along with the Stronghold of Hatred face down over Threshold 6, then the model and captive in the exit room. Okay, so now that that's all set up, your board should look something like this. Let's move on to the next section. So now you're going to take your cards and you're going to lay them out. We're going to start with the Darkness deck. Take the Darkness deck and kind of split it in half. Shuffle them up real good and then just put them around the board where people can reach them because you're going to be using these quite a bit throughout the game. Then you're going to take your discernment deck. Again, just split it in half and kind of put it around the board so that people can reach it. You're going to be getting into these quite a bit also. Next, you're going to have your event deck. Again, shuffle these up really good. It's very important. Placing them somewhere where they can be reached. There's your Heaven's Armies deck. There's 15 of these. Shuffle them up real good. Again, just put them somewhere where people can reach them. You may need these as you go along. These are your effects cards. Just put them out there. And finally, you're going to have your Affliction cards. These are double-sided. Um, they're all the same. They just have different sides on them. Now, Linda, do you want to talk a little bit about these? Sure, yeah. So these are Dark Status cards. You'll notice there's two sides. One is Dark Status 1. Second side is Dark Status 2. You're going to start the game on Dark Status 1 if you're starting from Chapter 1. And this is going to tell you the uh, light requirement needed to take out an enemy. Um, based off darkness cards, breaches, strongholds, and monarchs. And it also explains what Shrouded in Darkness is, so another little handy tool. So you'll understand this as you go along, but for right now this is just a reference card that you can just kind of put next to the board like that, so that way 
um, you can use it as it's needed. Next, we're going to grab the chapter cards. These list the objectives in the game. So each card will give you step-by-step -step instructions on how to complete each objective, providing page references along the way. Super helpful. Each objective must be completed one at a time and in the order listed. Once the step is completed, you must immediately read and complete the next objective mentioned until all objectives on the card are complete and you're able to progress to the next chapter. So keep in mind guys, whenever you're doing uh, each objective, there's gonna be a page reference number to take you to where you need to go to be able to understand what you're fighting. That way you don't have to have a full understanding of the book right away. Uh, the chapter cards will kind of guide you through the book and let you know, but you're gonna have to have a basic understanding of combat and things like that. But chapter cards, very important. This is how you play the game. Let's set those aside somewhere. Now we're gonna choose our word wielders, the heroes of the game. There's nine wielders to pick from. Keep in mind, in every game you must have at least four wielders in play. So if you have two people playing the game, each person will take two wielders. If there's three people, divvy it up. So I don't know about you, Linda, but right on top I'm gonna to pick these two characters. I'm gonna go with Sparrow. He is the creature speaker. Of course you're taking uh, Sparrow. Yeah. <laughs> so he is a seeker, which means he's gonna specialize in ranged weaponry. So he's going to get light boosts to anything that has this little range token in the upper right hand corner. This is his starting weapon. It's a longbow. It has a distance of two. And then this is the blessing that it comes with. Each blessing gives you a different ability. So we're going to set him aside. And then I'm also going to play as Peter, the living mountain. Peter is a champion. He's going to specialize in melee weapons. He gets a light boost to his melee weapon strikes, and this is his starting weapon, which is the Weight of Mercy. Uh, it has no distance because it is a melee weapon, meaning you can only use it in your zone, and he starts off with the gift, or the blessing, burst. We'll explain that more as we go along. Linda, do you want to come over here and pick your character? All right. I'm going to take Arya, the Songbringer. She's a discerner class, which means I actually get to pick which weapon I want to specialize in before we start the game. To start off, I do have the Burning Harp, which is a prayer type weapon. And it has a distance of zero to one, so yeah. that's pretty cool. So I can use it in my same zone or out to one zone. And it has a blessing, uh, which gives you the gift anointing, which means that makes you a healer. It does, I don't like that. It's always good to have at least one healer. Who else are you gonna pick? Hmm. Is it weird if we take two Just healers? Right on top, that's fine. Yeah, I love River. It's, it's another favorites. class, so that's one of each class, that's cool. Nice, so this one's the Edifier. She specializes in prayer type weapons and her starting weapon is Growing Knowledge. And it has a distance of zero to one and it has uh, the gift or the blessing in his time which I need in my life because that allows me a reroll. Yes, please. All right, so now that we've picked our wielders, we're going to take their models and we're gonna place them in the starting zone. So for chapter one, the starting zone is gonna be right over here uh, in the doubt dark zone. So we're gonna take each model and we're just gonna leave them there for right now while we we'll talk about the rest of the components of the wielder display. For starters, you're gonna recognize that there is a different slot uh, for every gift that you're going to earn as the game goes by. These are called refinement levels and they're color coded. So we're going to take these what we call cover cards. On the other side they're burdens, but we're going to take the cover cards and lay them face down over every single gift that we have. So starting with blue. And you'll do this for every wielder who's playing. Don't forget to cover the bottom right hand ability too. That's your white level. Now we've talked about a little bit of the components that are on the card, but let's just go a little more in depth. So here you have your main hand and on the other side of your character, you're going to have your alternate hand. You're going to see a little icon in the upper right hand corner. Now you can wield any weapon type you like with any character. You're not locked down to your specialization. You're just going to get boost, but let's just say you put a melee weapon there. Now you can use either one of these weapons um, at any time. Some abilities actually allow you to use both hands at the same time. And if you get an armor piece, um, you're going to also see a green shield in the upper right hand corner and it'll say armor. You can place that over the armor slot. Keep in mind, if you get a piece of armor that is a shield, uh, that has to be wielded 
in your hand. So you would have to remove that and place that in its place. Now, if you put something in your main hand, that unequips your starting weapon. So you will only be able to use these two equipped weapons. Any extra weapons that you are going to earn as the game progresses are going to be placed in your armory. Then you're going to have to use actions to access your armory if you want to equip, trade, or unequip any other items. So keep that in mind. If you see this little icon in the upper right hand corner is three little arrows, uh, that is a quiver. Now quivers are unique because you can equip them with your armor. That's why they're upside down. So if you get your quivers, you can wear them like this. They hang out the bottom. That way you can see the blessing that is on both. So the blessing is active along with the armor that you're wearing. That's really cool. Yes. So the last step in setting up your wielder is grabbing three action tokens and one guidance prayer token and placing those face up above your wielder display. So a couple other little things you guys are going to need handy is you're going to need um, these here. There's six different breach tokens. We'll talk about those in detail as we, as we play further. Also, you're going to probably need these at some point. These are another form of affliction, which is division. Uh, those are nasty. Try to stay away from those. Yeah. And then you're also going to have these shackled and overwhelmed tokens. They're two-sided. Let's set those aside. Hopefully that doesn't happen too often. And then finally, you're going to need your warfare dice. Now, starting with the very famous D20 here, this is your light die. This is how you're going to do most of your combat. You have that as a blue die, so it's really easy to identify. Yeah, it's important. The color coding is actually kind of an important thing, at least in the beginning until you learn the rules. You also have your 12-sided guidance die. Then you have your 10-sided faith die. Now keep in mind the zero on here is actually a 10. That's how you're going to guard in the game. Then you'll have your strike die. We'll talk about that more in detail later. And sometimes, but not always, you'll need an extra D6 for certain abilities and maybe even once in a while an extra D20, but they have to be an alternate color from the original. That way you can distinguish between the abilities that are happening. All right, guys, so that is what the setup looks like. When you're done setting up after this video, it should look something like this. Uh, maybe you guys have uh, other players on the other side of the board, but this is generally what it's gonna look like. Uh, so me and Linda are gonna jump right into gameplay and yeah. go and make some other videos so you guys can come and play with us, so. Let's do it. Let's do it. I'm ready.